beautiful. Hey guys, so Bree and I are out here in South Texas. We're about to show you how to use traps back here in this creek to catch some crawdads. And after a while, we'll then be cooking them up in a boil over a campfire, South Texas style. So there are a few things out here in Texas that you'll need if you want to get started with crawdad trapping. Now, one of the biggest things I'm asked about is what type of bait we use. And that would be cheap, dry dog food. About a handful and a half is all you need in the summer months. That'll last you five, six, seven hours, depending on how much activity is in the water. And in the winter months, a lot of times a day and a half, two days, a little bit goes a long way. Now, this is Twin Pet. They're not paying me to say that. But again, the cheapest works when you try and get fancy. You get the, the moist dog food. It doesn't even work as well, so you're just wasting your money. Now also, the traps we're using are G's traps, and those are actually made in America. And we use these because of their durability. They work really well. Uh, some of these traps here behind me were actually purchased uh, by my grandfather over 30 years ago. And they're still in use today. So they might cost you a little bit more, but they work really, really well. Now we also have a uh, rope on every one of these. You'd be surprised how many people forget that when they get ready to toss a trap out. And uh, if you don't have a rope, you can't get it back. That's kind of an important part. You'll also see that there's a uh, tag at the end of these. And those are so that we can actually see uh, the lines whenever we set them out. And also so that we can put the information that we need to to be legal. So those are going to be durable gear tags. Here in Texas, you need to have a license. You need to make sure you have a gear tag. You need to make sure that your traps are of legal size and that you're doing everything that you can ethically and legally. Puck really likes this part too. He does his part. <laughs> All right, some of you are probably curious. This one back here is a pyramid trap. They've got three entrances. Pretty awesome traps. Uh, commercially, this is what they use there in Louisiana to pull in their crawdads out there in the fields. So uh, they work as long as the top is above water. If they fall over, they don't work so well. They let everything out. Really awesome traps. It's homemade. If you want to know how to make it, go ahead and check out my channel. I'll put one of the links in the description down below. But pretty awesome trap for under five bucks if you want to put the time into it. Okay. Our traps are all baited. Time to get these things set out in the water. All right, let's do it. Now these first few traps are setting out, might or might not catch anything. And I say that because a week, week and a half ago, all this water was up and over my head. And that's because the San Antonio River, about two miles away, flooded, backed all the way back here. And it brings all the big fish, all the big turtles. So uh, we'll see how the crawdads do in this area. We'll move up a little bit further where the water didn't rise and see how our luck does up there.
we got the last of the traps set back here. Time to find us some shade, get us a snack. We'll check back here in a few hours to see what we caught for supper. Well, it's been a few hours. Moment of truth. Let's see if we caught anything in this area. What do you think? There's some crawfish. All right. Let's just get these guys in the bag. So I have quite a few traps to check. So how many keepers you got in there? Three. Three in one trap? A couple hours? It's not too bad for April. Shiny little fish down there on the bottom too? Yes. We don't want those. No sardines today. And any of the small crawdads that we trap, we typically put those back. And it's early, early in the season. So we'll see them later on in a couple months. They'll grow up to become big. Next trap. Anything good? There's a lot of fluffy things crawfish. in there. Lots of little bait fish. All right, let's get them out of there. And quick, get these guys back in the water. Awesome. Just one? Yes. Now to check our lone pyramid trap. I'll be back for Oh, yeah. That's a good sound. These pyramid traps are awesome. Now with these pyramid traps, gotta pour them out of the top. That's what that PVC is there for. So everything comes out the top. Grab onto the important things. Everything else needs to be put back in the water. So happy little fish. Really productive little creek. Though uh, every couple years it goes uh, dry so everything kind of dies and gets eaten. But it just means it's gonna be reborn. It makes for some really good crawdad water. Check the truck. There's a little bit more in this one. Oh, nice. Lots of keepers. And some babies. It'll be good here in a few months. He's kind of worried about this place. Oh. <laughs> that one almost got me. What do we get? Lots of keepers. That was worth it. Alright. few more traps and we'll have all we need for a meal. It's a big one. Sweet. These claws are almost the point where they're worth getting into. Let's see what we got in here. Lots of good grass back in there. Looks pretty cool. That's uh -huh. As far as today and what we've been doing with today, it looks great. Wouldn't say full though. <laughs> there are some monsters in there. The background? Yeah. <laughs> Check this thing out. She'll let go. Uh, you can get a hold of him? He wants to get a hold of you. <laughs> That almost hit me in the face. <laughs> almost doesn't count, but that was amateur hour right there. You guys can go back. Let's 
something. A few keepers. Not bad. This is uh, the first time, probably eight years, that I've actually gone after these pools right here. There's some decent ones in there. You see that? You get a good shot of them when they're cooked up and bright red here in a little bit. We're racing the sun. Let's go ahead and get the rest of the traps unloaded. Get our cook fire started up. And get to the part where we're eating food. All right, let's take a look at what we've caught today. This is pretty awesome, especially for how early in the season it is. Got some good, healthy crawdads. Some nice claws on them. Look at that guy right there. That's going to be some good eating. Now, you can buy these guys at the store. There's nothing wrong with that. We've done that a few times. But going out, trapping them yourselves, there's a lot of crawdads back here. There's nothing like it. So, fresh crawdads. Awesome. All right, so said it once, said it again. It's early in the season. Just a few traps, especially just a few hours. Got about seven pounds of crawdads, which isn't much for a Cajun. But we'll throw some sausage in there, some corn, some other stuff. Let's make a pretty good meal. Let's do this. Here we go. Hot full of ingredients. Fresh crawdads. Now all that's left is a fire. Let's do this thing. Well, our fire's going well. We just need that to burn down some coals. In the meantime, we've got a little bit of food prep to get going before we start boiling. So parts and pieces, ingredients. We've got some Tony Satries here. You can put that in the boil while it's cooking, or a lot of people sprinkle that onto the crawdads afterwards. A couple ears of corn. We'll go ahead and shuck those, uh, break them into parts. Doesn't take long to cook corn whole lot of small potatoes and you want to go for the small ones keep it under 10-15 minutes beautiful potatoes good size a couple of onions we'll throw those in with the potatoes let them cook down and a clove of garlic so, a few more things in here now we only have uh, probably seven to ten pounds worth of crawdads which again isn't that much so we'll go ahead and uh, cut up some of these sausages and throw them in there and we've got some uh, crawdad and crab oil and we'll put that in the mix as well but that's it other than that we've got some water we've got some crawdads as soon as the uh, coals are ready we'll start boiling water it's hot let's give it a try you hand me that pot free Get this stuff boiling. Shouldn't take too long because we're cooking with this heat. You can definitely hear it. Yep. Nice rolling boil. At this point, we're going to go ahead and put our potatoes, our onions, our garlic in. All those things are going to take a little while to cook. And our seasoning. That should cook in about 10 to 15 minutes. You can kind of stick a fork in the potatoes here and there. Once they're just starting to soften up, that's when they're ready. Put our seasoning in. 10 minutes, we'll check. And until then, we'll go ahead and get our corn ready and our crawfish. Oh, that smells good. Stir it up, put the top back on. Start the timer. Work. 
potatoes are nice and done. Got a nice rolling boil there. Time for crawdads. You want to make sure that this water is really hot. That you got enough water to knock out all these crawdads as soon as they get in. One thing that bothers me a lot when people sit up on it are they add too many crawdads for their pot. And you see the crawdads crawling around on top, slowly dying. It ought to take a second and a half, two seconds for them to die. That's it. As little pain as possible. You know, mussels, clams, crabs. This is how they cook them at the seafood restaurant. Nice. Go ahead and throw that corn in there. Cook up real good. We have lost our light for the day, but our crawdads are done. Take a look at that. Beautiful. So it is time to take them out of that water, let them cool down, and see what they taste like. You'll do the honors. We've got the ladle. table works a lot better but a stump will work some of those potatoes up here good stuff didn't seem like it was that many crawdads at first did it not at all <laughs> guys we have obviously lost our light and it's time to eat but uh, we're missing somebody so if uh, you look up there up on the cliff puppy's gone up there he is hunting something probably an armadillo and now he can't quite figure out how to get down here where these sausage and crawdads are so we'll see how how inspired he gets while we're eating but uh, crawdads are ready and we're gonna pile in so these things smell fantastic. Steam's still coming off of them. Uh, crawdads, we'll go ahead and grab onto the tail. The middle fin there in the middle, break it and pull the handle tube out. That's going to be the digestive tract. Once you got that down, you're going after that tail meat. It's pretty awesome. And we've already snuck a couple pieces of sausage <laughs> and uh, half a potato here just a moment ago. but. We do not have anything to drink down here, so our mouths are on fire. Just a little bit. Here we go. We at least know it's pretty hot. That's what we're down to. Check that out. Some beautiful crawdad tail. Cooked perfectly and seasoned. It's amazing flavor. Mm, shrimp? Well, kind of like shrimp. We're like crab. Like in the middle. 
in the middle of shrimp and crab. <laughs> Shares both flavors. This is fantastic. Huckleberry. Huck, come here, bud. You want a sausage? Okay. Huck, come here. Huck, come here. Got a sausage for you. I'm going to have to rescue my puppy here in just a moment. But guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we enjoy coming out here. This is what it's all about. You don't have to have all the expensive gear, uh, the big giant pots, the turkey burners, just a few traps, some fairly cheap vegetables, and uh, some seasoning. You can have a pretty good day. So, again, hope you enjoyed it. Poor puppy's not enjoying it yet. But uh, like, subscribe, share the heck out of this video, and as always, until next time. Bye, guys. Huckleberry. Yeah. Come on. Now, I'll put down my corn and go save him. <laughs> you guard the food from uh, the raccoon. There might not be some. I'm going to get left back. Good luck. Come here, Huck. You waiting for this? It's pretty hot. Okay. There we go. Huck will eat sausage. You can try the crawdads too. Let's see how fast it gets through that. It's a big piece of sausage, bud. You can try it. You get a bite into that onion yet? Not yet. I'll do it if you do it. All right. Yeah, go ahead and air me. You'll lose. So we found the potatoes are extremely, extremely hot. Here you go, Huck. Huckleberry. Hey, Huck. Okay. You gonna eat it? Oh, here's your onion. And here's mine. He just wasted a perfectly good crawdad tail. But the deal is, is the potatoes are extremely spicy because they've been in for so long. Same thing with the onions. And, uh, bon appetit. I like that. It was actually got really the good. sweet on the inside. Got the yeah. spicy on the outside. So I actually gave you the large onion and I just had a few pieces of the onion. <laughs> I good. was hoping it was gonna be spicy, so <laughs> it is, man. It is. I think the potatoes have a bigger kick though. I'm gonna fight my own battle right now. Oh, Whew. Good stuff. So I've visited a few of the channels that have crawfish boils uh, on them, which they do pretty well. There's a lot of good crawdad videos out there. But looking in the comment section, you can make it. It's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> looking at the comment section, uh, people that care enough to comment about crawfish boils, especially with the topic of purging, y'all are horrible human beings. Um, y'all gotta stop. Like the things that I've seen on the comment section of a crawfish boil about the purge or no purge um, debate. That's well, not really a debate. About to lose half my subscribers right now. Get them pissed off at me. But um, I'm crying. <laughs> it's good. You'll probably deserve it later. Something you'll do. Uh, the deal is, is that when it comes down to purging, guys, uh, we do this all the time. Like, we have the professional rig. We have that up there at the house. It's always fired up. Uh, out here in this part of the country, we're less than 100 miles, well, 100, 150 miles away from the Louisiana border. And uh, I have a creek that just is amazing when it comes to productivity. So we do this year after year, many, many times a year. We get to play with it. And really and truly, the, the turkey burner and the pots have become like family heirlooms. Like the kids want to know which, which kid is going to be passed to whenever we pass away kind of thing. So we know our stuff, and we have a muddy creek. But as far as purging goes, if you look at the studies, if you do the actual research on it yourself, and, and try it out over and over and over again, throwing salt on those crawfish, 
you lose crawfish, they're dying, they're suffering. You're already going to throw them to boiling water and kill them. They're already going to be eaten at the end of the day. Uh, all you're really doing is just washing the outsides of them off more and more. And the second I say something like this, I know somebody's about to like rant and rant and rant and I get it. I don't really get it. Okay. If there's no evidence, if I can do this over and over again and even set up my own studies and I see no difference as far as the taste, the only thing is that in one of them, the creatures suffer a whole lot. It's not worth it to me. And there's no difference in taste, especially with how much spice we put on these things. You just can't tell at all. The water doesn't get any muddier. Okay, so if you throw that salt in there and you spray them down even longer, well, you just spend another four or five minutes cleaning the crawdads. You got them even cleaner. But the deal is, unless you do the commercial overnight 12 plus hour soaking, which nobody really does, you're not going to have any difference as far as what's coming out or coming off of those crawdads. So salt kills a lot of your crawdads, and uh, that's not efficient, not economical. And purging, the word is even false. You're not purging anything out of them. It's not the right word for it. You're torturing. You're putting salt all over them. You're not doing anything that's helpful at all. So people say it's called purging for a reason. No, it's not. It's because somebody else called it purging a long time ago. It has nothing to do with what you're actually accomplishing. So enjoy that, Twitter trolls. Now, this light up here, I'm going to get a lot of people asking questions about it. That's actually made by Biolite. It's a LED lantern. It's expandable, so that's it. All the way expanded. It's got kind of a wire frame. And when it folds up, it gets to about the size of my fist. And it's extremely light. So pretty awesome. Now, it doesn't have its own power pack. You can buy that. It's actually being powered uh, by a Goal Zero power pack right now. It goes with my Nomad 7 solar uh, charging panel system. That's been with me on the trail for... 10 plus years but if you know Biolite and Goal Zero they're like fierce competitors against each other so that's I'm probably committing some kind of sin but uh, it works out really well uh, the Nomad 7 Goal Zero has been with me for again a decade this we won in some competition like a year or so ago and I even know Biolite made lights lighting systems though it's uh, the company that makes those little bitty rocket stoves you put sticks inside of it, then you can plug your cell phone in and charge it. I didn't know they did this until they sent this to me. So, pretty awesome. You know anybody that uh, is with Biolite? <laughs> send them my way, because those guys are hard to get hold of. But, pretty awesome solution. I sure as heck wish I'd had it on the trail all those years ago. We'll see. I know it's the day after, guys, but I have a few more things I want to mention about these traps. I've got three different types right here. Most of my videos, you're going to see me using these G's traps or variations of them. A lot of that has to do with uh, kind of the brand loyalty. These have been around my entire life and beyond. Uh, the ones that my grandfather bought and I used as a kid, uh, they're still around. They're still being used today. So durability is definitely there. A lot of nostalgia. So made in America, not a bad product to have. Now these are fairly custom. Uh, I say that because this piece right here is something that nobody else has. This is an eight inch extender. Uh, most folks have just the two ends put together. It makes a pretty good trap. But this piece here in the middle doubles the volume that I'm capable of catching. Uh, when I started having uh, medical issues, a lot of y'all been following the channel. Uh, the actual owner of the tackle factory that produces these here in America uh, contacted me, uh, gave condolences, and wondered what he could do to help. And there's not much, but uh, I threw out an idea and he decided to actually do this right here and make a run because the normal extenders are 15 inches I asked for the 8 inch this is 8 inches, 8 inches, 8 inches for a total of 24 because here in Texas the legal limit for a crawdad and minute trap is 24 inches in length and this puts me at a legal trap which is fantastic there's several other states that have that that uh, legal limit on them so this allows me to have a larger trap, something custom, something unique and I can catch a lot more so if y'all guys are interested in that, I can probably do some haranguing 
I'm talking 100, 200 people, and we might be able to get uh, a limited run of these things produced for you guys that want to have something absolutely different and unique. So throw them in the comments, uh, email me, tell me uh, your ideas, tell me if uh, this is actually something that you might be interested in doing because uh, I like it. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, also, one of the reasons I get a lot of city boy comments out of uh, the Cajun guys, those out there in the field quite a bit, uh, these traps are really great if you're dealing with storage issues. Notice I've got five traps right here all folded together with an extender. It doesn't take up much room. So at the end of the season, you still have a garage left. You're not storing just a ton of traps, which can be a real issue. Uh, they don't weigh very much. They nest. They're durable. I've got no problem with them. Now, for those of you guys that like to do it yourself, and I'm there too, we're living this kind of lifestyle. And I've got a big barn, so I can store these. These pyramid traps... I've got a video on how to build these step by step. Also this modified pillow trap that I designed, same thing. I got a video for that. And I can build these for around five, six bucks if you're making two or three of them at a time. And that's not counting the tools and the time. But uh, again, if you want to build your own, if you have the place to store these, they're amazing traps. And I show you how to use these things in the videos as well. These are definitely something to have. Uh, they work really, really well. One of the last things I want to mention here is that at the end of the season, we want to fold up these traps. Go ahead and uh, break down your G's traps. Uh, the pillow traps, I open up uh, the cage here. And for the pyramid traps, they get put on their side. Because a lot of these traps will continue to passively catch things throughout the season. So if you throw it in your garage, a lot of times you'll come back in a month and you'll have creatures, lizards, uh, mice, you name it, things will get inside there. Even if you don't have bait, you'd be surprised how many things get trapped by these. And so you don't want to make them into indiscriminate uh, death machines. You want to open them up and store them properly, responsibly. Uh, some of you folks might have been following the channel and see me trapping snakes, uh, which is pretty awesome. I don't even use bait these days. Uh, put them up in the garden, in the feed barn. Uh, they're in the flower, uh, flower beds. I'll put these traps down without bait, and the snakes will get inside of there. And so if they're a nice snake, a garter snake, a coach whip, bull snake, a hog nose, they get released right then. But what I'm really, really looking at are rattlesnakes, squirrel snakes, water moccasins, copperheads, and those get in there just about as frequently. And they're all around my house. You never see them uh, until they're in the trap. So things that are out at nighttime, things that are, you're passing up all the time when you're walking back and forth, you never know they're there until you put out a trap. So when the crawdads stop running, and we're not catching very many, these traps pull double duty, and they go up to the house, and they trap all the venomous snakes so that I can either remove them, uh, transport and transplant, or some of them uh, we have to do away with, just depending on what the circumstances are. Uh, but snake trapping, check those videos out. They're absolutely fantastic. Hope you've learned something, guys. Enjoyed it. Take care.